Hello, Reformers, and welcome to Shadowverse. Now, this is maybe going to be sort of a casual series that I do every now and again. But, yeah, that, I'm primarily saying that because I have been looking forward to playing Shadowverse on Steam for many months now. Because I realized that it was on the Android store and on the iOS store. What, what is it called? The App Store. And, yeah... I really wanted to play it, but I didn't have a mobile device capable of playing it, and I didn't really want to play it on a mobile device, to be honest, but yeah, I actually don't have either of those operating systems on mobile, but it doesn't matter anyway, because it is now on Steam, and you can play it too, because it is free to play, and the link is in the description, so you can check that out, and yeah, so... This is Shadowverse. This is similar to other card games in its genre. Obviously, this is a collectible card game. And many people have likened it to Hearthstone. I could not disagree more. I do not think it is like Hearthstone at all. Yes, there are similar mechanics, because what card game does not have similar mechanics to Hearthstone or to any other card game in the same genre? So, yeah, there are obviously similarities. But this has a wide variety of differences. And, yes, there are some cards that are extremely powerful, but that's just... That's just how it is. It really depends on how you build your deck. And I have just started, as you can see here, I am Refi. Refi's Adventures in Shadowverse. And I have 20 rupees right now, yes. They they use rupees as the, as the currency. I have 9 crates to open. But I'm not going to be opening the crates just yet. I'm going to head into the solo mode, because there is a main story here. I've just gone through... Chapter 1, I believe. Didn't I go through chapter... No, I didn't go through chapter 1, but I'm going to be going through with Arisa. I actually think I will be playing Arisa for most of my multiplayer battles as well. If I am going to be doing multiplayer battles, I think I will, but it really depends on how it goes. I actually, I just really love this game, so yeah, that's, that's primarily the reason why. But anyway, yes, so this class has cards that fill your hand with lots of low-cost fairy followers. This makes it easier to play multiple cards in one turn and activate other forest craft cards' abilities, giving you more power. Now, of course, there are a multitude of different classes, and they all have different playstyles, actually vastly different playstyles. Whereas in games like Hearthstone and other card games of similar sort of style, the classes are not actually that different. Like, yes, okay, in Hearthstone you have the Mage and Hunter and all the other sort of Warcraft classes, and they all have a different hero power. But they don't really play that differently. Sometimes, yes, okay, they do, and I, I know that there's a lot of people out there that are fans of Hearthstone, and I, I actually, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna berate it because it is a good, it is a good card game. But recently, it has turned into quite a. Yes, Shaman Stone, basically. It's turned into that. But anyway, the point is, this has some very different classes. We have Swordcraft here. This is kind of like a Zerg deck. It will just basically just get a bunch of cards on the, on the field very, very quickly. This is Runecraft, the spell deck. This is Dragoncraft, big, big creatures, and you can... Obviously, take advantage of your uh, overflow, your overflow ability that will trigger a certain amount of effects there. And then we have Shadowcraft here, which is all about necromancy and making use of your shadows. Shadows are an additional resource that the Shadowcraft class has. Then you have Bloodcraft, which, as you can see here, once your leader has 10 defense or less, Vengeance will activate, strengthening many other cards. So basically, with Bloodcraft, you want to play with your leader around 10 defense, which is HP in this case. Every leader starts with 20 HP, so that is 50% HP every time. So 10, de 10 defense or less, that's going to be... That's pretty risky, but I, I hear that Bloodcraft is very powerful. And then we have Havencraft here, which is all about using amulets. And amulets are things that cannot be attacked, but they have a countdown timer and they can summon powerful followers and different effects and other things like that. I do know of a card actually in Havencraft that enables you, I think, after three different iterations of the same card, because what it will do is it will count down from, like, four turns, and then after four turns it will give you another card, and then that card will count down for another four turns, and that will go on for another turn after that, and then eventually the final card that you gain from that particular amulet will just win you the game instantly. So if you can survive until that happens, obviously then you are in for a treat. But... As it stands, we're going to start with the first one, and that will be Arisa. And I've 
spoken for quite a long time now, haven't I? Okay, so... Here we go. We gain some cards as well, by the way. you can, I, I believe you can play this game completely free to play if you so desire. And of course there is always an option to purchase some crates or packs or whatever they are called. And we're going to get an Elf meta, meta, Metallurgist. Uh, yes, of course. So we can deal two damage to an enemy follower if at least two other cards were played this turn. That's a pretty nice removal card. And we're going to try, shall we? Arisa has left the forest to rescue Loseria from the shade that abducted her. That was what happened in the tutorial stage. I unfortunately couldn't show the tutorial because, well, it was kind of slow. And it didn't allow me to change the Windows resolution until I reached the main menu. So there's that as well. But anyway, there we go. We're going to head in and see what kind of ominous presence has filled the skies. People know it by one name, the Morning Star. It is a promise of freedom, a glimpse of new worlds, a light reaching into oblivion, a shadow in mortal hearts. When darkness covers the world, the gates of annihilation will open. This is what I trained for. And of course, we don't have, unfortunately, we don't have the original Japanese voiceover, but they're pretty before. reasonable. Ah, the Morning Star. Maybe I'll find Losaria there. More of them! That mark is the Morning Star! Where have you taken Losaria? Are you hurt? I'm moving in! I'm fine! What was that? It changed shape! But they're no match for me! You take that one! So apparently something's going on there. There's, oh yeah, there's a lot of shades transforming into ourselves and all kinds of other things. Aha, so we are against our comrade in arms, I suppose. In Forest Craft, there are many ways to add fairy cards to your hand. Use those fairies to overwhelm your opponent. They also interact with things uh, otherwise, but... Oh, we are get well, wow, we actually have ten play points already. Usually you start with one, but this time we're not going with that. So we're going to be playing this card. Oh, yes, whenever this follower attacks, put a fairy into your hand. Oh, okay, so we're going to be definitely filling up our hand with fairies. I act at my heart's command. Oh, yes, well, that's that's a pretty easy follower to take care of, but let's have a look here. So, some followers do something extra whenever they attack. Try attacking with your Dark Elf. Yeah, of course we are, but I'm going to take a look at this. Deal two damage to an enemy follower. Well, I'd, I'd like to do that instead of attacking with this, but apparently they want me to do that anyway. It's kind of a little bit annoying that the tutorial is still going on. I actually thought that it wouldn't happen, but uh, yeah, they're just telling us about the extra effects and things, so... Yeah, that's okay, I suppose. Ah, uh, okay, so yes, one of the main mechanics in Shadowverse is the Evolve mechanic, but obviously don't know whether we really need to use that just yet, but we will be needing to do that soon, but uh, yeah, let's try. Let's try to activate Elf Metallurgist, Metallurgist, yeah, Metallurgist ability, you'll need to play at least two other cards first. So yeah, I, I will not be able to do that, I don't, ah, yes, I think I can actually, I think I can actually do that. Because... I can now add a fairy to my hand, and then I can do that, and then I can activate the ability by playing two other cards. So there you go. Now we can deal two damage. And now, now, this is what's really good. We can evolve the Dark Elf for Raw, or whatever it's called, and finish off the enemy leader. So this is your evolve counter here. We usually have two, and the person that goes second has three evolve points. Now evolve, what that does is it adds plus two, plus two to a particular minion or a follower unless there is, well, shall we say, some other kind of ability that the card has. Like some legendary cards will only gain plus one, plus one if they have a particularly strong ability like Merlin or Lucifer, for example. So anyway, yeah, you, you, you don't know those cards unless you, are, unless you know Shadowverse, but yeah, I'm just... Sort of letting you know. Okay, so let's let's evolve this, shall we? Yes, I do. Why, why do I have a confirmation? Why do I have a confirmation on that? Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. Okay, so anyway, now we can attack. And, oh yes, also, 
evolve will only allow you, if the creature has just been played, to attack another creature. It will not allow you to attack the enemy leader. Only on the turn after that will the card actually be able to attack the leader. So that's why our Dark Elf there was able to attack the leader, because it had already been played in the previous turn. So yeah, there's that. So you don't have to worry about people zerging you down and things like that. But anyway, you, congratulations, your awards were automatically claimed. And we have three of these. Wow, fantastic. That's very nice. And a standard card pack ticket. Ah, great forest craft brings out the true power of fairies. The elf metallurgist is now yours. Add it to a deck and play story matches. Yeah, I'd very much like to do that. Okay. That was us, wasn't it? They seemed like exact copies. I'm Marissa. I'm sorry. You are? My name is Erica. Thank you, Erica. I'm really glad you are around. It's nothing. Do you have any idea what made them attack you? No, I'm not really sure. But they took my best friend. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna find her, though. As a matter of fact, I'm looking for someone, too. A friend of yours? Not exactly. But he's one of the most important things in my life right now. I could never let him slip away. It sounds like he's lucky to have someone so dedicated. I'm sure you'll find him. It was good to meet you. Good luck. I hope she finds who she's looking for. Yeah, me too, but I, I think that might actually be... Is that the Dragoncraft guy? It might be the Dragoncraft guy, but anyway, new chapter is unlocked. Let's go to the Dark Woods. Hopefully they won't... Ah, yes, there we go. So there's... A, yeah, I'm just going to use the default deck for now. Heartened by her encounter with Erica, Arissa is heading toward the Morning Star. What's going on? The Morning Star? These creatures? I don't know what to make of them. <laughs> Another one! Who is that? I think we'll find out. Uh, we already know that that is the Bloodcraft fellow. So, yes, he's gonna be... Oh, yeah, we're in the... Oh, wow, what a... What an amazing coincidence that we are in some sort of cathedral with bats and coffins. Okay, so, yes, this is the mulligan, st mulligan stage where we get to redraw a couple of things. I'm gonna redraw the Magna Botanist. No, we, we gained a treant. Okay, well, that's fine. He withdrew, well, he redrew one card, and he, he, oh, his vengeance is already active because he's at 10 HP. So, I'm a little bit worried about that, but it is only the second level, so it shouldn't be too difficult. We don't have any cards to play on this turn. This is where we start with one play point this time around, so we're going to take a little bit of damage here. What is that? What does that do? Let's take a look. It's a Sweet Fang Vampire. Okay, so Drain, this is an ability that some of the Bloodcraft cards have and some neutral cards, as far as I'm aware. And what happens here is if this Sweet Fang Vampire attacks with its one attack against me, it's going to heal our opponent by however much damage it deals. So if it deals three, then it obviously heals him for three, but he's at max HP right now, so it doesn't even make any difference. But if I deal some damage to him, then obviously that's going to affect it. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm probably, what is this? No, I don't really want that. I suppose I will play that. Gain plus one. Oh no. Okay. So I guess I'll play this then. Because the we want to get an additional two fairies and then I can play those two fairies and then I might be able to play the elf guardian next turn because that will then mean that I have a little bit of a taunt, a little bit ward up because a ward is basically meaning that the opponent has to attack that character or follower before it can attack the leader that we are currently playing. So if we play these two fairies right now... Ah. Yes, I think I may have made an error there. I made an error. Well, yes, of course I did. Fantastic. But at least maybe they are going to attack. Yeah, of course. Of course. Okay, so yeah, that was a misplay on my part. But do bear in mind that this is literally within the first 20 minutes of me playing this game in general. I do like it a lot. It's just I am pretty bad. So, okay, let's have a look here. 
Okay, we're going to play one of these, and we'll play one of these as well, because that, I believe, is sort of an amulet type thing. Okay, so now this is this is good. Now he's going to... Well, basically, he can only deal, what is that, five damage per turn, so unless he has buffs. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually okay with that, because it doesn't seem like he can really do too much. Because what's going to happen now is we're actually going to get some cool things going on. So, as you can see here, this Elf Guardian is what I wanted to do beforehand, but I miscalculated the amount of play points that I'd need. So, if I play these two fairies... And this elf guard right now, then she will gain ward, which will mean that these guys have to attack her before they can attack me. So we're going to get rid of a huge amount of enemies here. And what's this? Uh, okay, I'm just going to play this as well. There we go. Okay, so w when this card dies, because it has last words, it means that I am going to gain a fairy from her death, which is perfectly fine with me. So as you can see, there we go. Look at that. We just eliminated three of the enemy's followers because obviously we're, we're quite kind of lucky about that. But obviously my misplay earlier is probably going to haunt us quite badly. So let's have a look. Okay, well, let's see here. Okay, so the elf tracker is probably what I want to play right here. Deal one damage to a random enemy follower two times. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to try and hit that. And the Elf Guard. Ah, I, I see, I see. Okay, so technically I could play the Sylvan Justice to deal two damage to an enemy follower. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to play the Elf Tracker right here. You won't escape. Yes, and another one. There we go. Okay, so we eliminated two of those. That's fantastic. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually thinking I'm going to evolve this. And we're going to kill that, so it stays alive. It's a 4-1, that's perfectly fine. And there we go. So that fighter is probably going to charge into this fairy and probably kill it. I don't know whether that evolve was that good. I think that was a bit of a waste, personally. But I think it's okay, because then we can play a bunch of cards next turn and hopefully get some good things going on. Look at that. That that buff is really, really nice. Okay, so what do the treants actually do? Gain 2 plus 2. Okay, so if two other cards were played this turn, so... Let's see. Hmm. What does Okami do? Whenever another... Okay, so let's do that. And let's do this. And then we can play the Elf Guard, and that will have wood, which is fantastic. And then I'm actually going to, I think, probably deal some damage here. Maybe? Or maybe... I, I'm just going to kill that. I'm just going to play it a little bit safer here, because we are at 10 HP. And this guy can do some pretty significant damage if he gets a certain ability... So, I'm just going to be a little bit careful here, because these guys cannot get through what we currently have, unless he decides to evolve one of them, which he probably is going to try. Or not? Is he is he actually going to try and do that? That would be... Yeah, yep, there we go. Yep, that would be a thing that he would have to do. I'm surprised that he ran those other things into our taunt before deciding to evolve those. So that was a little bit of an error on his part, which is kind of nice to see. But anyway, we have attained victory. And there you go. That was uh, easy enough. Should have been a little bit quicker than that, but obviously, you know, just started playing. And I, I personally find that the experience is very, very fun. I mean, it just seems like a fun game to play. It's not actually that difficult just yet. I, I don't think the single player is going to be that difficult, but I think it's really fun to play, and it just has kind of a cool atmosphere to it. <laughs> Not so strong. But why did you attack Losaria and me? Ugh, there's no time. I've got to save Losaria. Exactly. And then we're going on to the next chapter, of course. So, yeah, I think that will be it for this episode. And if you want to see more, I would be perfectly happy to oblige because this is one of the games that I, as I say, I've been anticipating pretty heavily. And. Well, it's it's obviously a mobile port and everything, but, you know, I, I already explained that. But anyway, if you want to play Shadowverse, the link is in the description. And if you want to see more, let me know. So I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.